Hi, I'm Daz. I'm the producer of The Drift, uh, and you might notice the green screens behind me. Um, and this is uh, something that I saw on Facebook uh, today, uh, at the time of the Oscars that has come out, um, about uh, unpaid visual effects artists uh, working on the life of Pi. Now, I don't know whether that's true or not, um, and I would suspect that there's an element of truth to it and an element of sensationalism, as you see on Facebook. But it did actually make me think about something, about um, my own productions, in particular with The Drift, um, in that we don't get paid uh, on The Drift, and we made that very clear at the beginning that nobody gets paid working on The Drift. But um, the reality is, uh, at the moment with The Drift, is that it's potentially becoming quite a large project, uh, and it may well attract attention from the media and potentially um, some sort of commercial interest. And what happens when that happens, or if that happens? Um, other projects that I'm working on, like Starlight, which is um, intending to be commercial from the outset, is also attracting um, people who want to partake and at the moment are also offering their services for free, even though it's going to be a commercial project um, ultimately. Um, but I don't have any money to give them right now, and they know that, and they're still giving stuff. And it's all well and good, and it's great, and it's noble, and it's fantastic, because you know it's all about the passion of creativity and making films and what have you. But the reality is that if I was to give, be given you know, a multi-hundred uh, million, billion, gazillion dollar contract to turn it into a film, then surely these people should be paid, etc. The crocodile that's closest to the canoe at the moment is, um, is the drift, because if that were to... Um, attract some sort of commercial interest, say just um, just say um, a DVD distribution or an online distribution contract, um, how do I go about paying people? And do I pay them in advance, in which case I can't because I haven't got any money? Do I pay them at the end, in which case everyone gets like 50p or, you know, two, two pounds or ten pounds or whatever? Um, it's very confusing. And, and one of the problems that we've got... Um, although we've, we've really worked hard to avoid it, it's still going to happen, is that you know, we don't know how many hours each person has done. So does everyone get paid an hourly rate? Does everyone get paid daily rate? And if so, how many days? And does an actor get paid the same as a, as a painter who gets paid the same as a producer? You know, um, we have written like a contract for our uh, crew, certainly in pre-production and during filming, which is where this all, everyone gets paid the same, it's all equal. But we don't know what we're going to get, if anything at all, nor is that the aim. So, so that's complex. And secondly, um, what's also complex is, particularly in post-production, we've got people who are volunteering left, right and centre, and the um, position that we're in is basically uh, get involved, um, you can use the stuff you use, you do for us on your show reel, you'll be part of a bigger project, all the rest of it. And that's all very noble. Again, you know, the whole point of the drift is to demonstrate to the industry that we can make movies too, we can write good stories too, we can work together and produce something that people are going to want to watch um, for a lot less money. Um, but while, And while it is a lot less money, everybody's happy. You just don't know what's going to happen in the future um, or what's coming. And the higher we sort of push our limits... Um, the, the, you know, the, the more interest that we're, we're going to get from the industry, certainly from a commercial point of view. Even if it's just, you know, two in the morning, um, sci-fi channel or, um, a, you know, or a smaller channel or what have you, or an internet channel. You know, the fact is, if someone is, if we're exchanging money or contracts, then there's a, an, an ethical obligation to feed that back to the crew. If nothing else, just to let them know. And secondly, to actually look at what are our options. Something in, in the past that I've, I've worked on sort of projects, commercial projects, have literally just crashed and burned before the projects even moved forward, before it even went to script, simply on who's going to get what, how many movies we're going to make, who gets the royalties, what percentages are there, um, and it's a common story. And so far, with The Drift and all our previous films, we managed to bypass that. We managed to, you know, there's, there's sort of two advantages about making a movie for nothing. One is it doesn't cost any money. Second is that no one argues about the money, because there isn't any money. It seems as soon as you throw money into the mix, or success into the mix, then, well, you see the example we have at the moment with The Life of Pi. Interesting. I just thought I would mention that, particularly now with what's, being float what's floating around the internet. Like I say, I don't know how true or untrue it is. It could just be one person who's fed up, um, who feels that they didn't get paid enough. Um, it could be true. Who knows? Um, 
I don't know everything about the industry. Um, I know that some people do feel ripped off uh, in the industry. Whether it was an intentional or not, I don't know. Um, perhaps we'll never find out. But for now, for us, you know, it's something we've got to be really mindful of because the last thing I would want, you know, in a year's time is to have, you know, another colour up there like, you know, blue for the drift saying, well, hey, look at those guys, they ripped me off. You know, that would be terrible just from my own personal point of view. That was never the intention. So hopefully we'll learn what to do before the time comes.